Hey everyone, this is Daniel Grace from Aesthetic Perfection, and you are watching Loud TV. How, how was this uh, amazing uh, experience uh, with uh, Lindemann? I mean, I think you said it yourself. It was quite amazing. It was um, really the, the the biggest tour that we have done in our career. And, you know, I've been doing this for quite a while. So it was, um, it was something that uh, I really took the time to appreciate while I was there. You know, every day I would kind of be walking around in the backstage or, or go on to the stage for sound check at the first time and just, you know, you're looking in these venues that are like sometimes tens of, you know, it's like 10,000 people there and you're like, wow, I'm I'm really lucky to be here. So um, it was uh, it was very surreal sometimes, but uh, really it was just, I think, a wonderful opportunity and we loved every second of it um, and uh, the end of the tour was uh, of course uh, uh, cancelled uh, because of the covid right yeah well uh, it, the 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 and the the remainder of the tour for lindemann was cancelled but we actually left uh, after kiev because we had to go to america to start our own tour so we left a bit early and it was funny because our tour got canceled because of that. So um, I think it was two days after I got home from Lindemann and I, I flew to Los Angeles to start our tour and I was really worried. I thought this, I don't think this is going to happen, but I'm trying to like talk to um, my colleagues over there. Like guys, it's getting pretty serious in Europe. I don't think this tour is going to happen. And they're like, it's fine. It's fine. Nothing's going to happen. I'm like, okay. So I get on a plane and I fly over there and like, Literally 20, 30 minutes after I land, the travel ban between America and Europe happened. And I was like, oh, crap, I got to get home. So I like called my wife. It was two or three in the morning. I was like, book me a flight home as quick as you can. And she's like, oh, my God. OK. So I got on a flight the next day. So it was like two transatlantic flights in 24 hours. And then and then the tour got canceled anyway. So <laughs> and we know that uh, a lot of artists um, lost a lot of money. Uh, whereas they are not on tour, so you are supposed to be on tour. So, how do you? Yeah, how many how many bags did did you did you lose? <laughs> um, I would just a quick estimation, probably thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars, because you have to remember, like I was on my way to tour, so it it wasn't just the income that I would have that I lost from the uh, from the, the show fees. It was also um, merchandise sales; those are gone. But I had already paid for the vehicle and the flights, and I printed all of the merchandise, and so I've already invested heavily into the tour, but I couldn't actually make any of that money back. So all of that merchandise is just sitting in LA, being unsold. So you know it's. It's uh, it's it's a pretty big chunk of money, but uh, I think you just have to roll with the punches and say, okay, this is what it is, and and make the best of it. Your live lineup is amazing, and of course, uh, you are three now. Uh, I would say Elliot, and of course the the beast Joe. Right, yeah. you worked with uh, Combi Christ. You make some. Uh, remixes and so did you meet joe when he, he was in comic christ mm -hmm. so um i met uh joey all the way back in 2009 when i supported combi christ in europe i actually think we played in paris on that on that tour um so that's actually also where i met elliot because his other band uh at the time was called Auto Auto, and they were also supporting Combi Christ. So it was Combi Christ, Aesthetic Perfection, and Auto Auto. And um, I think that's kind of how most connections in the industry are made. You know, you just go on tour and you meet different people, and and uh, you connect with one another uh, on a. You know, you become friends. You you find that you have similar musical visions, and and uh, Joey and I had been close friends ever since then. And and when he uh, decided to step away from Combi Christ. Uh, we both felt that we were 
uh, you know, at the right, you know, right place and the right time for him to become a part of aesthetic perfection. And, and Elliot has been uh, working with me actually ever since 2010. So um, I'm really, really blessed to have such talented people playing behind me, helping me, helping me look and sound so good every night. Yeah. And I've heard that the, the band is 20 years old, right? Yeah. Yeah. Happy Thursday. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes. I don't feel old at all. <laughs> um, yes. I started when I was 17. I'm 37 now. Uh, it's been quite a long journey, but I think, I think for a project like this, it's okay because I think when, when you're young and you're starting bands with a lot of different people, it's hard to keep it together that long. But this being a solo project, it just made sense to keep the name all the way through because no matter how much the band changes, it's still me, right? So it's like the music is just a representation of who I am at that moment in time. So 17-year-old Daniel and 37-year-old Daniel were different people, but it's kind of the, the, the aesthetic perfection sort of helps you trace that path. Yeah, different chapters. Yeah, and uh, there was a a big gap between um, uh, the new uh, the new album, w w which was released uh, last year, and the uh, the previous one, and um, I think your your voice evolved a lot, and uh, it's more challenging, you know, with the high higher voice and a more melodic voice. Mm -hmm. It was it was a challenge for you to to sing l like this. <laughs> Um, I think um, the if I had known how hard it is to be a singer, I probably would not have done it because <laughs> it's it's so much more challenging than I ever uh, imagined that it would be. Um, you know, because when the band first started, it was just all like screaming and no technique or anything like that. But I realized, you know, after a couple albums, okay, I've got to I got to figure out how to do this or else I'm gonna have a really short career. So as I started studying how to scream i started learning how to sing and i was like oh this is an interesting thing to start kind of incorporating into my music and the more i i sang the more i realized uh, how much i enjoy it and uh how it's would be really really cool if i could uh make my singing voice and screaming voice and everything like as good as they possibly could be so that i could have as diverse a vocal style as possible so i could do anything that my mind my imagination could come up with so um it is certainly a a difficult uh, thing to do but i find that it's really rewarding when you work super hard and people like yourself say hey i can hear the difference your voice is getting better you're like yeah <laughs> the work pays off this is cool so It's it's um it's something I really really love to do and as as time goes on I I find that it's one of my favorite things to do. Well, industrial when I started getting into it in probably the 90s was it, it was a dance genre, right? It wasn't it wasn't just kind of experimental noise where it where it had its start. Um so I was always into uh the, the dancier industrial music. And also like growing up, I was a really big fan of like, you know, 80s pop, you know, Depeche Mode, Michael Jackson, all that kind of stuff. And that stuff's also really groovy, really dancey. Um, and so I feel like that's just kind of a natural part of who I am musically. So uh, it's not anything that I do consciously saying, I want this music to be dancey. It's just, I think it's just there. Um, it's important to listen to as much music as possible and f even in genres that you don't like find things about them that you like uh, because it just adds to your understanding of the discipline and I think helps you become a more uh, mature and diverse uh, creator because I think that if you just kind of follow the same patterns all the time you as an artist are going to get bored and so will your audience. Hmm. So of course there are uh, a lot of melodic song and uh, there is a, um, a there are a lot of uh, guests on this album. I think this is the the first time that you you get so many guests, right? Yeah. The most famous is uh, Richard from Rammstein. 
but it got uh, the guitarist uh, Jinx mm -hmm. or uh, Wesenberg, which is uh, also a solo musician. So, yep. how many? And Nix also. So, yeah. Why? I, so many. Uh, you know, uh, I think in the last few years, uh, you know, since my last album, Till Death and, and Into the Black, um, I kind of learned to put my ego aside and recognize that other musicians um, have ideas that could be helpful or really add a new dimension to my own work because I started working with other people like being a producer for Nix or uh, other uh, doing writing for other artists and and I realized that that um, the output of those creations is is great but I would never have done those things if I wasn't working with other people and I thought well why don't I start working with the talented people that I know that are in my world who can help me take my own songs to the next level or, or bring ideas, fresh ideas in that I would have never come up with just sitting alone in my own studio. Um, and I think that, that that's really hard when you've been a solo artist for so long and you have this kind of like ego where it's like, it all has to be me. It, it can only be me. I don't, I don't know if other people understand this, but I was this way. But um, once, once I kind of put that, put that aside and, and realized that I have so many incredibly talented musicians all around me who can help me make something that's better than I could ever make on my own. I just was like, yes, let's do it. Okay. You know, Nix and Jinx and, and, and Chris John Wiesenberg, let's, let's do this. Let's make something amazing. And I'm, I'm really, really proud of what we did. And I'm really uh, grateful that they took the time to work with me. What's actually the, um, of course, the, One of the best song is uh, the song with uh, Richard from Rammstein. Uh, what what did he bring uh, to to the song actually? I think um, you know the, that song actually had you know, Richard was the third guitarist to play on it actually. So uh, I originally wrote it with um, uh, Mick Kenny, who is God I can never pronounce his band name. Anal Nathrock. They're like a it's like a almost not grindcore, but they're just like really extreme metal band from, from Birmingham. And I wrote the song with him and he played guitars on it for the first, for the first version. And we were like, Oh, you know, let's bring in Jinx actually. So Jinx from Black Veil Brides there, he played uh, guitar on, on the second version uh, because we wanted sort of his kind of tone on it. And then we we're like, you know, it's, there's something missing there. And, and uh, Joey was like, well, why don't we, talk to Richard about it because Joey's close friends with Richard and he works with Rammstein um, and uh, we sent it to Richard and we thought that he was just basically going to copy what the other guitarists had done but he really he didn't he added his own uh, character to it he added uh, all of the um, guitars that you hear in the bridge and the sort of clean guitars that go through the uh, the uh, first version of or the first uh chorus uh that wasn't in there before so i actually had to change the song to fit richard's guitars and it was it was awesome when it was all done me we were both like me and joey like oh my god i it, it didn't know this song could be this good and and so it really was thanks to richard he he, he brought a whole lot uh he brought a whole lot to it and you were uh talking about your ego And uh, your solo band, and uh, which is very rare, you know, in uh, in the music industry, It's only in the industrial or electronic sound, you know. I've met uh, Mortis, Combi Christ, you, and so many. And why solo solo career? You know, you're only. It's funny, you know. <laughs> I think uh, because it's very difficult to get let's say three or four guys together to uh, share a vision and share the same amount of dedication to a singular project. I think that's why bands break up is because, you know, you've got so many different people who are being pulled in all different directions, either from their own ego or from, you know, their personal life or their own artistic vision. It's just, there's so many things that, that uh, are required to, uh, 
have a, a successful musical project. And, and I learned this early on when I was in high school, I was trying to, um, start bands with people. And I was like, all of these guys that I'm trying to play with, they're not dedicated. They don't, you know, they, 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 they don't want to show up to practice. They don't want to go and gig. Like I was in bands where the guy was just like, I'm never going to gig. Like, why am I going to be in this band then if we're never going to tour? Um, and so that, that's what made me say, okay, fine. I'm going to have to figure out how to do this on my own. And then, you know, then you get on your own and then you've, you've created your own set of problems because now you're stuck in your own ego and you, you, you're unwilling to compromise and all of this other kind of stuff. So there is no perfect solution. It's always difficult, but, um, uh, I think being an electronic musician makes it easier to be on your own than if I was to say like you know, play every instrument on my own, like guitar, bass, drums, singing, whatever. That'd be crazy. <laughs> But if you fail, it's your fault. Exactly. Exactly. I'm the only one to blame if it fails. <laughs> um, we were talking about, uh, of course, the yeah, the music that evolved a lot, but also the um, the the aesthetic, which becomes. Uh, perfect almost you know and uh, yeah when you when you watch the um, this song yeah with uh, Richard from Rammstein you know the um, the aesthetic is so so unique you know and do you manage by yourself the pictures and the video clips well again it, it comes down to um, letting go of your own ego so uh, there was this this moment in time where i was like i have to now make all of my own music videos myself so i bought a camera and i figured out how to do stuff so i made a couple of music videos totally on my own but then i realized this is very difficult <laughs> and there are only so many hours in the day i can't i can't become a perfect director and also a singer and a producer and all these things so um you know i started uh working with people that i knew Uh, were very, very talented, but also wanted to help me achieve my own vision. So, for example, like with Gods and Gold, I came up conceptually with what I wanted. I said I wanted these three characters, and I wanted them to be in this type of room, and I wanted this kind of makeup. But I worked with this amazing uh, 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 makeup artist. Her name is Pomp Berry. She's on Instagram. You got to check her out. She's just wild, the best makeup artist like ever. Um, and then I worked with my friend Clint Carney, who is uh, actually uh, used to actually still has a band, but uh, is really doing uh, full uh, feature length films right now. And uh, he really took the visual aspect of the Gods and Gold video just way beyond anything I could have ever imagined or done myself. So um, I'm always there. I'm always got got my hands dirty. I'm always like, no, it should be like this. Let's try that. Let's do this. But I recognize that there are limits to my own abilities and that I have to work with people who can help me bring my vision to life. And on the last album, you released uh, this album by yourself without a company. Uh, why did you uh, stop with... Uh... <laughs> That's, you know, uh, the music industry is changing and it's been changing ever since Napster. And I felt that uh, labels are very slow to adapt. And um, as the industry changes, I realized that people are much less interested in a full length album than they are in just having, you know, a new song every couple of months, so a new single. And so when I approached my former labels saying, hey, guys, let's let's try doing a single model instead of doing an album model, they were like, no, I don't know how to do this. What are we going to, you know, this this isn't something that we want to do. So I said, "Okay, well, it's something that I want to do. So I buy. I'm going to go try this on my own. And so uh, I did that for a couple of years. And that's why there was such a big gap between between uh, Till Death and, and Into the Black, where I just wanted to experiment and create singles uh, with different styles, different looks, you know, all these different types of things. But uh, my fans were really the people who pushed me to make another record because I would have just created singles for ever, maybe. 
But my fans were like, can we please have an album? And I was like, no. And they're like, can we please have an album? And I was like, no. And they're like, just give us an album. And I was like, okay, okay, fine. So I, I made this album for them. And I'm, I'm really glad they pushed me to do it because uh, it was a really fun uh, artistic journey that, uh, you know, you were making songs just to make songs instead of trying to make the next hit, you know, whereas that's what you're trying to do when you're making singles only. So um, it really changed my perspective um, and made me think maybe there's some sort of uh, place for both singles and albums. And so I'm going to try to find a find some some middle ground between these two things in the future. So uh, uh, I think being free of labels gives you the freedom to just explore whatever you want to explore as an artist. All right. I think you... You have new projects, right? I don't know if we can talk uh, with uh, Julian. The oh, yes, yes. I don't know I if, you, if you want to talk about it. Uh, well, uh, I, I mean, Julian and I decided to sit down, uh, obviously not in the same room, uh, but uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to just collaborate on a song and see where it went and so for the moment we have one new song that uh, we are really really proud of uh i think it sort of encapsulates the the feeling that i think a lot of us are the, the the feelings that we are all feeling right now kind of during this this uh epidemic this pandemic the uh, the the lockdown sort of feeling of uh isolation and and at least me personally feeling very claustrophobic stuck in uh so uh i think you're going to hear that on may 29th <laughs> whatever that is whatever it is you'll hear it on may 29th it's very soon so um <laughs> yeah. and yeah next projects for for you um you know i'm i'm doing a lot of collaboration like with julian and uh of some other artists, a lot of, I think what's, what is good about this moment is time in time is that we have the opportunity to like sit down and, and, you know, work together because usually musicians, we've just got these crazy schedules and, you know, Hey, let's work together someday. And you're like, when is someday with, when's this time going to come? Uh, but, uh, since all of us are just kind of locked at home, uh, we're finding the time. So uh, I'm doing a lot of collaborations. I'm working on new music, whether or not that turns into a record. I don't know, but I've got tons of new songs. Uh, I'm really, really excited about, about the future, to be honest. I mean, I know that things look uh, bleak right now. I know that a lot of people are worried about the future, and I understand. But I think that, uh, I think that when we're on the other side of this, things are going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. 